Double O Quanta. Hey again, it's Robert184, Gundam.tk, continuing my look at the parts of the Master Grade Double O Quanta. The GN Sword 5 looks pretty solid and has a lot of good gimmicks built into it. First of all, when you put the blade together, it's two parts here, although you can see where you're going to do the connections when you're transforming this into its larger Buster variants. But it's sort of cool, you don't have to pop it out and turn it or anything like that. You're able to turn it, but only 90 degrees, and that's if you turn it from the sword to the rifle. When it's in sword mode like this, the handle is uh, not going to move this way, but it will bend down that way. And this part is going to plug into the forearm, and because of that, it has this pivoting gray part here, which is going to plug in and hopefully lock everything into position and allow the hand to be moved around because this is also rotating, which seems like a pretty good touch. You're able to swing this up and you'll notice that it's on a slider mechanism there. And if you do want to put it into the rifle mode, you bend that down, bend the handle down, turn that, and all of a sudden you have a blaster. Starting with the shield connector, this thing is absolutely solid as a rocker, so it feels at the beginning. Solid piece up here, it's going to move this much here. This part here is also going to bend up and down. And then you're able to move it around here all the way. It also bends here and here. So basically you're going to be able to get this into any position you want, but it doesn't feel like it's going to fall out of place. It also rotates ever so slightly here on this blue part. I put on a white uh, dry decal here, which is something I don't do too often, but the shield is just a beast. It looks really, really good. And where I'm really happy with it is when you're putting these blue parts on top of here, a lot of gray, there's a lot of slits here. So the gray part from underneath is coming to come through. And of course, this is a white part instead of a seal like on the high grade. This is going to open up nicely. You have room to put a little bit of lining on the front and back of that. And of course, if you pop this open from the back, you're able to swing out the other drive there and this has two lenses that again it tells you to put seals on the insides of but I'm not going to do that so I'm hoping that the light comes through a little bit shinier. The bits fit on here fairly solidly although it may be a little bit of a challenge to get them in. This part is attached into this one and then this part here you can notice that it bent up a little bit before I moved it out and you'll see that there's this part here and this is actually on a bending L mechanism if you think of a Tetris block with just three parts. I know that's not a Tetris. But anyway, when you attach that on here then, you can see that everything can move in and out of place. Now that's pretty good, it's easy to put on, but when you try to bend it off to the side, sometimes it's just gonna pop off on you. Other times I've had it just move very, very smoothly, so a little bit of patience is gonna be needed there. However, these back parts here, first of all, this white part is able to bend up and down, but if you bend it up, of course, it's gonna hide this attachment. And when you do that, there's a bend mechanism in here that bends this part out very, very solidly. So you're gonna have no problem swinging out these bottom parts to make this shield look even more menacing than it already is. And though it doesn't feel instinctive, if you end up pushing up pretty hard on this, it's going to stay connected while you get it up there. And of course now you can bend it up and down here. And you're also able to move this bit so you have all sorts of different positions. But in general, in its menacing form, it's going to look something like this. The double set of bits is very easy to pop off because of its easy connection here. But when you're taking this blue part off, you have to be very careful because it's actually clamped in there quite well. So you may want to take these green parts off before trying to dislodge this. This is really something that's not going to feel good going on and off, and you may feel like this is going to break very, very easily. With the side bits off though, they have a handle in here that bends down nicely and fits in to turn this into a fairly cool looking weapon. The attached two also, you can see that they slide apart here with not too much difficulty. And if you get this out of the way, then you have this as a small blade type weapon with the handle down here. And with this top one, you're also again able to swing this part down. And when you do that, you get another weapon, although this one has a little bit more of knobs, etc., sticking out, which is going to be used when you put this into the buster forms. The transformation, these stay attached together, but this part on the inside, you're going to have to bend it down so that the hole is at the bottom, and you're probably going to need something like a toothpick or your modeler's knife to fish that out later when you need to reattach it. A little hard to make out, but there's very tiny little notches here, and what you do is you end up putting these ridges along those there, and they actually stay in place quite solidly once it's attached. You also clamp it into place here at the bottom, and then these pegs at the top are offset, so that will seal up nicely. On this bit, you'll notice that the handle when it goes down below protrudes ever so slightly, which is important because when you're attaching it on, there's a notch there that you slide this into place, 
then this will lock in. It doesn't quite lock, but it stays in place. And then we're going to have, you're going to have a completed buster sword. And that thing is a monster. Since there aren't a lot of poses where this is going to stay up in a natural form, if you use this action base with this part pointing forward, it has a hole there that you can lock it into place. And hopefully with that in hand, you're going to have a lot less weight issues. After moving the handle into the correct position, what you do at the end of this is that the where these two bits are attached, you detach them from each other here at the end. With a little bit of patience when you open this up, you're able to move these at the end into the desired position. They do tend to stay in place. And at the back, you'll notice now that the handle is turned, so you can use the action base to keep this set up as a blaster, which five seconds of spoilers, Setsuna uses the blaster a lot more than the sword in the movie, although you do get to see the transformation. The GN drive holder is identical to Master Grade Exia's, except for this time, it's in clear green. For me, the real winner, though, of this Gundam so far is the head, with the only complaint being that it seems like the neck is a little bit too long, but that may uh, get fixed up once he gets his shoulders on and the huge shield. So why do I like it? Well, first of all, you've got the white faceplate with a good channel if you want to put in some black lining there. The red goatee provides also the under the eyebrows there. And what I did is I ended up using just the green stickers on the green part, and I was hoping that you'd get some light piping through there, uh, but you don't actually get any, any effect. But the gr dark green plastic there really comes across as being black. But it's the little details that you've got these gray parts here before you put the white parts on, then you put the sticker on, and then you put the green parts on, which just add a level of depth. And something I haven't mentioned earlier is that there's writing on the green parts, and the writing matches the stickers, but because it's separated by a few millimeters, you actually have a 3D effect with the writing, and it looks very, very good. And that doesn't come across anywhere more clearly than on the head, where this blue part and the white part fit together well. You put the black seal, which goes across the two of them, and when you put in that green part, the letters double O, or the numbers double O and the letter Q look great. So a little bit of lining and these blue parts on here look very good, and outside of the lack of light piping, I think that's the highlight of the night. That wraps up my look at the parts, so why don't you let me know what you think down below so far? Things that are disappointing in the parts or the inner frame or the weapons? So far my big complaint is really just uh, with how finicky it is to get the bits off of the shield. But outside of that, I love the inner frame and the way the green condensers pop out and all the extra details with the green on the green seal on the green parts and the way the head and the chest all work together. So far looking pretty good, but it doesn't matter until you turn this into a bigger version of this. So thanks for watching everybody, Robert184Gundam.tk. Anything? Or should I just go back to using the regular black eye stickers?